G'day guys, Kev Spec. How you going? Today we've got another how-to. We're gonna rebuild the subframe on this bad boy. That's right, we had some issues just before drag day with the rear subframe cracking. The uh, BA to FG suffer from basically a poor design and not very strong rear subframe where the bushings are mounted and they actually try and tear the mount off the frame. So that's what's happening to uh, my bad boy. She started to crack before drag day. We quickly welded it, sort of bogan spec on the hoist just to get us through drag day. But we're gonna brace it up, clean it up, paint it up and make it look all nice and beautiful and a whole lot stronger. So stay tuned. This is how to rebuild an FG rear subframe, keep spec style. You. If you like the video guys, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Good morning all, Kev's back coming at ya. So we're off to the, uh, the diff joint, we're going to Diffco in Frankston. So Reese and the boys down there have uh, been looking after the rear end of my car for a while. And a uh, really good bunch of guys, so we're going to go down there. And uh, we're going to rebuild the subframe on this bad boy. Um, would love to do the IMS diff hat. Money and time. So. IMS are actually been out of stock for a couple of months. I've been chasing them for quite a few weeks now and uh, they're still waiting for stock to come in so there's not much we can do there. So we're going to do it Kev spec style. Like a lot of things on this channel, I just do it the way I want to do it because I'm Kev spec. <laughs> so we're going to brace the diff, we're going to weld the subframe, we're going to put new bushes in it, and we're going to make it all nice and strong so she can handle the power she's got now and anything we throw at it in the future. So stay tuned, I hope you like the video. And uh, there'll be plenty of uh, bashing and welding and and stuff for you to uh, to froth over in the. Uh, Kev getting his hands dirty for once. <laughs> Beautiful morning here in Melbourne. Ah! So you run up the arse of someone. Yeah, so just cruising along to the diff place. Had a bit of an issue this morning. The bloody thing wouldn't start, so. I've had some electrical issues in this thing last month or so on the cruise it started playing up um, ended up being from what I can diagnose one possibly two per poor earth connections the earths on especially FG Falcons and any modern vehicle are critical to the electrical system running properly so the earth on the driver's side chassis rail um, it's a common one and the one under the battery and near, I think it is the uh, ECU. Uh, very common. They just need to be undone, cleaned up, you know, refitted, and yeah, a good, nice, clean contact. And good old coil packs, you know, it wasn't really missing, but coil packs on FGs, especially, once they get a bit old or they build up a little bit of resistance, they can do some weird shit to the car. I've seen quite a few transmissions now that were carrying on like a dead transmission. Um, and it was coil packs. Like, yeah, doing weird stuff, neutralizing, uh, jumping out of gear, selecting wrong gears, um, selecting no gears, going into limp mode. I've seen three cars fixed by coil packs. So don't underestimate the power of the electrical system in your FGs, guys. Um, check your basics, you know, your fuses, your earth points, your coil packs. Um, your ECU earth, they are number one fixes before you start throwing money at ECUs and transmissions and mechatronics units and all these hardcore parts. Coil packs and earth points guys, Kev's hot spec tip for the day. Welcome back, we're just here at Diffco. Car's on the hoist, it's 
time to get this rear end out. So let's do it. You. see me first stage is brakes off this resty caliper or tie it to the shock absorber because that will remain in the vehicle so brakes off each side yeah and then you want to undo these three bolts here the blade arms each side and then we'll do the uh, little ABS sensor up on top here can't really see it support brace and then the uh, a couple of main jiggers up here one big one there another one there and another one there righty guys so all the main bolts are undone so we've got the shock, shock absorbers the uh, blade arms are undone Support brace is undone. Tail shaft is 90% undone and sort of sitting there. I've got the center bush undone, so that's ready to come out with the K-frame. This side's all undone. Support, shock absorber mount, blade arm bushes. Don't forget your, like I said before, your ABS sensors each side. And there's one little mount up the top here. See that guy? Don't forget him, otherwise she won't be going anywhere. And then I'm pretty confident it's just the uh, six big guys. There's three each side, and the K-frame will be coming out. All right, so we've got our, we've got our jig hooked up on the center of the K-frame here. It's time to rip the puppy out, so let's do this. Sponsored by Brad's Toolbox. Everyone. All right, guys, so let's see uh, K-Frame out. You see we've got the old Super Pro, Super Pro? <laughs> Super Pro. Super Pro floating center bush. That will be changed, that's four years old. Um, but our main obvious uh, bit of rattiness is this center mount housing. You can probably see it's a little bit cocked. Like that's not the camera, <laughs> it's the mount. So whatever we need to do, we're gonna cut it off, strengthen it, whatever we need to do, we're gonna replace that bad boy. We're gonna replace the other diff bushes, which are pretty, pretty well gone. I'm quite sure you'll find once we get into this that they are no good. Check the diff out and uh, go from there. So uh, stay tuned. And so there's our diff assembly housing, guys. So that's the center diff bush there. You can see that's a a floating bush, I can move that with my hands so there's nothing actually holding that bush in. She's a floater. And these guys are cactus, I'm pretty confident of that. Yeah, so you can see guys, she's not good. Not the worst diff bush I've ever seen, obviously, but yeah. And this one, 
This one's let go on the center there, so you can see that pin, I could probably... Yeah, so that center bush has failed around the center. You can see there, that's not holding in anymore. But the outside doesn't seem too bad, but probably because that's not holding it anymore, so... We'll get this guy out, that should just... Pretty much do that, <laughs> that's out. So yeah, they're only pretty much, a, as you can see, a bit of grease and a slide-in fit. And uh, yeah, a couple of new guys on the outside. We're gonna, we're gonna clean all of this up and try and make it look beautiful. Bit of paint, clean it down, all that shit. Alrighty, start ripping some of these arms off and get it ready to put it in the hot tank. Alrighty guys, so we've got the center out and from my expert tells me that my true track is not a chong track so that's the first thing we were going to change and bin if it was a cheapy chong track but it looks like it's the genuine deal which i was pretty confident of six seven years and all the hard driving so that's good we're just checking the um the gear and all the uh the seating and as you can see she is spot on ski like you wouldn't really bother adjusting that so we've checked, what do you call that? The pattern, what do you call, what's the term in checking that, mate? Oh, it's just your gear pattern. You, yeah, your gear mesh pattern. Yeah, just to check the mesh between crown wheel and pinion, yeah? So now we're just gonna pull her apart and basically throw some new carrier and side bearings at it and put it back together, yeah? Winner, winner. On further inspection, my true track isn't quite as true as it should be tracking. So let's get in the bin. And we've got this bad boy, brand new, eaten proper M80, is it, or M80? M86, look at this bad boy. Yeah, baby. Brand spanking new true track. So here it is all stripped. So I'm just doing some prep on the box, like I'm saying, um, grinding it all back so we can cut, weld, and strengthen. So the whole frame has been stripped completely and now it's time to strengthen her up and make her look beautiful all the bushes are out and yeah it's time to make this bad boy look nice and pretty it's the rear end all out got a new one of them bad boys it's my diff all ready to go back in new seals new bearings Reset up, new true track. You. Okay, so this is day two. Um, leaving from day one, we just finished heating that box up and squaring it all up. And as you can see, pretty much to the eye, she's she's pretty banger there. She's sitting nice and square. And she's also sitting. Oh, she's also now sitting nice and square that way. So before you could see with the naked eye that that was cocked, but you can see that's sitting beautiful. 
So now it's time to uh, add some plating, strengthen her up, paint her up, get all the control arm sorted and away we go. So here's where we're at after a couple of hours of cleaning up, thinking about it, pre preparation for the bracing. So it's all been cleaned up. And yes, I've got a little infill piece for here, so. I've got this little infill piece that's gonna go in there. We'll weld that up in a second. That'll be probably the very first weld that we do. So that'll go in there. And as you can see, it's all been ground back, ready for the bracing to go in. Maybe a couple on this back side as well. So here's the uh, <laughs> here's the Kevspec bracing kit. So this is what I've come up with. They're the braces I'm going to be using. Stay tuned. If I should stay or be alone Won't you make up your mind Cause I'm getting tired Of overthinking every move you make And I can help you decide Who you're loving now And how I'm not quite there somehow my intuition says to give you up But my heart can easily let you go But you won't even try to survive you Would rather keep it all inside And I can help you decide Alrighty guys, first, uh, first bit of etch prime is going to go on This is to protect the steel obviously And then we'll uh, give it some black paint Look at that mate, the car side. First coat of undercoats on. It's a thing of beauty. Alrighty guys, time to get some black on this uh, subframe. Make it look all nice and pretty. It's been another long day, this is day two. So obviously uh, we've got another full day of assembly and pressing bushes in, but that's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Alright, let's watch this. Uh, have a look at this thing, will ya? What a monstrosity. But it's going to work. <laughs> Alright. Who you loving now? And how I'm not quite there somehow? What a thing of beauty, eh? Well, not quite beauty, but it'll do for Kev. Why? Because Kev's back. I try to tell myself this isn't love. But I hate that I never really know if I should stay or be alone.
I'm just waiting for you to fart But you won't even try to survive you Would rather keep it all inside And I can help you decide So we're just starting day three here all ready to go back together so we've got all our arms are painted with new bushes new rose joints got the cradle there all strengthened and braced up got the center bush there a couple of new side bushes about to go in some genuine fpv bushes will go in there that's those bad boys there she's all looking pretty nice so, while I had the time, I've given the uh, underneath of the car a quick body deaden, a bit of a quick clean up. Just sprayed some body deadener in there. Give her a bit of a, bit of a birthday underneath. Especially on that wheel well, they really reverberate noise. So I've given it a little bit of a, some body deadener, just a bit of a clean up. A bit of body deadener on the arms. Alrighty. Body deadener on the chassis rail. So yeah, let's get to uh, reassembly. You. All right, guys. So we're just about to uh, do this side bush here. So you can see I've got the special Ford tool with a plate on the back and a plate on the front. Basically, you're just going to squash this push into the uh, housing. So. So that front plate's bottomed out now, so we've got to change to a smaller one. Installation complete. It's that easy, guys. There you go, guys. That's one. Just filling this bad boy up now. As you can see, she's all together, ready to go back in the car. So exciting times. This is the good stuff. A brand new Eaton True Track inside the diff here. New seals and bearings. It's just started spilling out, and that's full. So yeah, guys, look at that. All ready to go back together. New arms, the axles are in. New bushes, new rose joints, new inner bushes. New control arm bushes up in there. All ready to go. You. Guys, time has come to put this rear end back in this car, so let's do this. My intuition says to give you up, but my heart can easily let you go. So as previously mentioned, this is what we're looking at. Look at that subframe, all nice and black. There's my uh, 
subframe strengthen. So plenty of clearance on everything there. That's how she looks in the car with the new bush, floating bush in the outside. Got some new race brake pads in there. Some new control arm bushes in the lower. New bushes in the side, diff bushes, they're all being replaced. Diff center's got a brand new true track. Ew, she's looking good. All nice and painted up. There you go, guys. Keep spec subframe restore. We've got all new uh, rose joints in here. All new rose joints in there. New bushes up in there. All right. Even took the time to re-pot rivet that back on. Eww. So she's looking good, everything's clearing, handbrake doesn't foul, so uh, it's time to put some wheels back on and enjoy this bad boy. Okay guys, we're actually at the end. So um, car is 100% finished and we found a few things that we didn't really want to find um, and fixed up that rear subframe. So Reese, the owner of Diffco here, has been more than wonderful. He's his staff have been absolutely amazing, you know. How does this work? Where do I put this? Because I pulled it all apart and didn't really know where it went back together. So, Reese and the boys here have helped me out with advice, tips. Uh, Brad, his uh, top worker, actually did the diff centre. Um, and I'll just let Reese explain actually why I brought my car in and what they found with the rear end. Just a quick note, Reese doesn't 100% you don't bring your car here to do what I've done to the subframe. If you're going to do this, you do it properly, you yep. use an IMS diff hat. Now, I was in talks with uh, Stuffy at uh, Independent Motorsports, and he has had no stock for months. So I couldn't wait any longer. I had a track day in a week, so I kept spec strengthened it myself. Now, even Reese did say, look, that's come up pretty Mickey Mouse, and, and I don't think that, that centre bracing has done anything but strengthen that rear end. So I'll just pass you on to Reese to explain uh, what they found with the diff centre. A couple of years ago, Kev came to me with issues relating to the brake and drive shafts. We fitted some 1400 horsepower shafts, heavy duty wheel bearings, our best ones. Moving forward, about eight months later, he's having leaky diff issues that normally occurs when the true track that's inside the diff centre or even the centre of LSD, the, or, uh, the C clip retaining rings just simply pop out. Now, these are known for popping. Axles out. They're known for popping when you use a questionable true track. If you use it, the Eaton product and their direct fit, you don't have sure. an issue. But sure. any of the ones that come from generally China, yep. all that sort of stuff, they just don't work properly. And so when we pulled the diff hat apart, we found a questionable true track in it. We fitted our own Eaton unit directly in it, chuck some bearings and seals in there for good luck, and then give it back to Kev for him to fit it to himself with some new bushes. So it did have a true track in it, guys. It wasn't a Chong track, but basically what, what's been done you can get what's called a Dana 44 True Track, which is a lot cheaper than an FG True Track. FG True Tracks, as we all know, they're about a thousand bucks wholesale, twelve hundred dollars retail, give or take. You can get a Dana 44 True Track for like five hundred dollars, and you need to do a couple of slight modifications, which most diff shops can do. Obviously, the diff shop that originally fitted this. Now, this was seven years ago, so for a so-called not a proper true track that really shouldn't have been in my M86 diff yeah, center. Yeah, lucky ones. Um, it's held up okay, but it has started spitting out axles. As Reese said, they don't machine them quite properly to the tolerances that are required by Eaton and, and Ford. Yeah. And that's what Reese found. So he's, uh, he's fitted a brand new Eaton center to this car. Um, it's all been covered by Diffco. I have to say these guys have, they've gone be beyond, like, the diff center was not their problem, guys, okay? And this man and his company has covered this diff center for me. Yeah, there's a little bit of working out in the wash, but these guys have come to the party pretty much from a leaking axle seal. So it just goes to show Reese's uh, professionalism and his company, um, just outstanding stuff. And I just really thank you, Reese, for all your guys' time and um, the expertise. So um, if you ever need anything in the way of diffs, axles, specialised diff housings, true tracks fitted, anything, custom, shortened diffs. Uh, what else do you do here? Pretty much all that? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, all that and more and a bit of fabrication. Yeah, yeah. 
like yeah. fabrication, you want a, a high end diff put in your Chev pickup like we've got on the hoist right there. You just want a factory Land Cruiser jazzed up or it's worn out. They, these guys can handle a stock diff to full on four wheel drive modifications with all your fancy housing. So check out Diffco in Frankston and be sure to like the video and give it a subscribe. Massive thank you to Reese and the guys. I'm gonna leave it there and I hope you like the video. Leave a comment down the bottom um, if you have any issues or questions or if you'd like me to pass on any questions to Reese, I'd be more than happy to uh, answer those questions for you. Hope you like the video guys. Love yous. You.